Hey everybody, I wanted to take a look at words their way. We've been working our way through the text and I wanted to take a little bit of time to connect this to a lot of the content that we've already learned about in our class. Um, so when we think about uh, language uh, development and literacy development, um, one of the things we got to keep in mind is that we are indoctrinating learners, we're indoctrinating children into the system. Um, in this we are moving um, to make sense of the symbols um, and the the written or the verbal uh, use of these symbols. Um, so words their way, one of the things that that helps us do is it helps instructors move students from that alphabetic uh, system to patterns and meaning making in English um, across a variety of settings and contexts. Um, and we've talked a lot about that in, in our class about differences across these settings and contexts and trying to support learners. So with words their way or, or as we unpack this, um, I want to take a step back and look at the different contexts that we've studied so far in the past. And a lot of this is uh, review at this point, but I want to remind you of where we're coming from and situate this a little bit. Um, so when we think about language development, we think about three primary contexts. Um, obviously, um, I believe that the, the world is adapting, and I think that there are more contexts. But for purposes of this class, we can assume that there's only three that, you know, that our learners, our students basically exist at home, uh, at school, and out in the community, like the in-between spaces. So when we look at interaction, um, when we talk about those contexts and we want to study language development, we want to study literacy, we look at uh, certain types of interactions in these spaces. So we can talk about um, eye contact and shared reference points, so that's keeping eye contact with the child to let them know that you are talking to them and they're talking to you and that their utterances matter. Uh, the communication loop, basically circular sharing, I talk, you listen, you talk, I listen, uh, child-directed speech. And once again, that's you know, talking directly to the child, not sort of just yelling off into the ether as we see some parents and teachers do. Uh, verbal mapping, that's when you go out in the store and you see uh, parents will sort of walk around the store and they'll say like, you know, one apple, one red apple, two green apples. Um, it doesn't mean that they're losing their mind, they might be, um, but they're sort of mapping out the world and, and sort of indicating what different things are. If we look at uh, Questioning, there is a, uh, a change in tone uh, as we question. There's a change in the way that we, we interact with the, the other person, uh, with the individual when we question. And then also, there's a significant amount of linguistic scaffolding or supportive dialogue as we try to carry on conversation. We don't really get what we want from the conversation. We sort of modify the words that we use and the ways uh, that we speak with the individual. And that leads into mediation, but simplifying to focus the discussion. So if you don't feel like the person really gets what you're saying, you sort of scaffold and you, um, you, you, you modify what you're talking about. When we look at these different contexts, we know there's a lot of different variables that impact those contexts. Uh, we've talked in the past about uh, diversity. We've talked about culture and identity. Um, we've talked about the different social routines and somehow, sometimes when society says certain social routines are appropriate and others are not. We talk about the ways that SES or socioeconomic status impacts literacy and language development. But then also um, there is your role. Uh, there is your job as a classroom teacher um, and uh, the impact that you have on that learning environment and the curriculum that's used in the school. All of these things impact language and literacy development and they impact them across home, community, and school in a variety of contexts. So when we talk about words their way, um, there's a number of reasons why we use words their way. Uh, the, the first thing I'll do is I'll sort of explain what Words Their Way is all about. So first off, it's a developmental spelling program. Um, it thinks about uh, cognitive development of children and tries to situate instruction that's uh, developmentally appropriate for individuals. It's also research-based purposeful instruction. Um, you know that the, the instruction is targeted for specific uh, means and uses. Uh, we're also differentiated to meet needs of various students. 
Um, so once again, it's thinking about various uh, ability levels uh, and trying to provide instruction that's uh, best suited for them. Uh, Words Their Way is all about finding generalizations in language and finding patterns in language, not memorizing specific rules. Um, and then Words Their Way focuses on uh, instruction that is alphabet pattern and meaning based, and we'll, we'll unpack that in a minute. Um, the key of Words Their Way is word study. So word study provides students with opportunities to investigate and understand uh, these patterns that we see in and across words. And the mindset is that knowledge or understanding of these patterns means that kids don't have to spell one word at a time. So as they, uh, as they read, as they get, engage in literacy practices, what they're doing is they're sort of looking for patterns in and amongst these clues to make sense of, of what they're reading. And we'll talk more about that. So the purpose of, of word study um, is that, first off, we, we explicitly teach the phonics, the vocab, the spelling skills that students need to be proficient readers, writers, uh, and engage in literacy activities. We also, um, through Words Their Way, we develop, we provide opportunities to uh, uh, identify, to discover and identify these patterns, to uh, move around or play with these concepts, these word concepts, but then also think critically about the text as they interact with the text. So when we look at words their way or, or, you know, as we continue to think about the purpose of this, we uh, understand that students are going to develop a general knowledge or they need to develop a general knowledge of English spelling. Um, you know, you, you want to develop the, the understanding about spelling and the elements of spelling so that kids can spell. But more importantly, um, they, they want to explore and play with words and they want to develop generalizations. Once again, one of the key components here in Words Their Way and in word study is we're looking at patterns, we're identifying these patterns, and we're trying to establish generalizations across these. Um, we're having kids act as investigators of the text. We want students to also uh, understand and identify and, and you know learn the regularities, patterns, and conve conventions needed to read and spell. So once again, we're looking across language and we're trying to sort of map out the different characteristics of language and uh, understand these in order to identify and use these patterns that we see across language. Uh, within word study, we're also uh, having students develop increased knowledge of word spellings, word meanings. So they're gradually improving and increasing their lexicon. So there's a lot of text on the screen and typically what this means that uh, you don't focus and I don't focus, but one of the things I wanted to focus on here is this sentence, okay? So we're looking at uh, in words their way, they say becoming fully literate is absolutely dependent on fast, accurate recognition of words and their meanings and texts and fast, accurate production of words and writing so that readers and writers can focus on attention in meaning making. So in words their way and in word study, what we're focusing on here is meaning making. And in order for kids to excel, to survive and succeed in meaning making, we want them to have this fast, accurate recognition of words as they uh, decode uh, words, as they make sense of words and read words, but then also as they encode, as they create, write, um, we want them to be fast, accurate, and, and be able to produce them pretty quickly. So that's the key of this. We're looking for them to be skilled as they use these texts. So. When we look at spelling development, we look at uh, five stages. Um, uh, we start off with our, our emergent spellers, that they're basically just getting their, their mind around uh, spelling and what spelling means and the, the vocab and the letter systems involved. Um, we move into stage two, letter name, alphabetic spellers. Uh, stage three is where we advance a little bit and we, we look at uh, patterns in the words and we look at within word patterns. Uh, stage four uh, is when students start to make sense of the, the, the inclusion of syllables and affixes uh, in words. And then stage five is where we get pretty advanced and we, were, we look at word der derivations uh, and that gets into a lot of the uh, more femix uh, knowledge that we talked about earlier in class. 
if we unpack this a little bit more and look at uh, words their way, uh, the emergent spellers were basically looking at ages one to seven. Um, students are spelling their words. With, they have random marks in there. They have uh, drawings included in their words. Um, they have uh, lines and linear components that sort of look like writing, but it may not be. Um, they have random letters, random numbers in there. Uh, letter name spellers, if we take a look at that, were uh, still, for the most part, in the same grade level, but we're moving up from uh, into ages four to nine. So students can generally spell words with initials and final consonants and some vowels. Um, still problematic uh, in terms of uh, what we would consider to be correct spelling. Uh, ages six to 12, first grade to the middle of fourth grade, typically. We're looking at within word spellers, so students are spelling words with initial and final consonants. So you'll see those hard consonants in the in the word, um, and then some blends and diagraphs, and then they start to add long and short vowel letter combinations. So they're still honing in on those consonants in the word, um, and then they're slowly starting to fold in other content. When we move from ages 8 to 18 and for, into 3rd and 8th grade, and once again, these are just, um, you know, uh, prototypical examples for grade level, then we start to get into syllable and affixes as spellers. Students are able to spell most of the words that, that they interact with. Um, even some of the challenging ones have constant doubling in the middle of it, or if they see common suffixes or, or different endings that they've seen again and again. But for the most part, um, they basically have the opportunity to, to make sense of that, and they're getting better at spelling. And then they move into uh, ages 10 and beyond, uh, basically 5th grade to 12th grade and beyond, where their students are really making connections between the spelling of the word and the meaning of the word. Um, they're thinking more, this is what I just referenced, they're thinking more about uh, morphemic knowledge, and they're thinking about syllables, prefixes, suffixes, roots, uh, and making sense of how all of those component parts impact the meaning of the word. Um, and so it's pretty sophisticated use of language at this point. So one of the things to keep in mind here is when we're talking about uh, bringing this into the classroom, once again, this is slowly building up opportunities for our children to understand how to act as like investigators in a word. So one of the things that we start doing as the teacher is we want to collect data at first and we want to make sense of where students are in that sequence. And we'll talk more about these inventories and observations and samples uh, later and in future literacy classes. Then as the teacher, you're going to analyze the data um, and, and try and figure out, OK, what can these children do well now and what do they have problems with? Uh, then you figure out, um, you know, what are you going to do with this knowledge? Uh, what sort of instruction will you prepare? What's what's developmentally appropriate for the children? Um, you assess how successful this was, and then you decide, okay, well, I need to continue doing this to strengthen and build to automaticity, or perhaps I need to try a different route, or these kids really get it. I need to move on to other areas. Um, and then as the, as the teacher, you continue to monitor growth. You continue to pay attention to uh, what they can and cannot do. So hopefully help, that helps you. That's our first look at Words Their Way. Um, this is one of the primary texts that we use in and across our different literacy courses. Uh, and the key component is to have your students act like investigators, uh, understand patterns, in words and across words, look for those patterns and use that to help them as they make sense of, um, you know, the structure and format of language. So hopefully it helps you out. Uh, thanks a ton for following me around to the end of this 14 minutes. All right, see you.